Maybe there might be one. Um, but it's important, guys, to recognize these when you're using this horizontal asymptote test to, yeah, once I see this, I know there's no horizontal asymptote. None. Now, the other thing I got to be careful with, though, is I still got to ident identify my vertical asymptote. So that's when my denominator, did I write that wrong? No, I didn't. Huh, OK. So my vertical asymptote is going to be my denominator set equal to 0. Right? But again, could I also have a hole? Right? I could. So you got to be careful. But again, I look at this. I can't factor. Like the x cubed is not going to divide out. Right? So, or any x is not going to divide out. So therefore, I get a um, x squared is equal to a 3 halves. Square root, square root. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. So I'm not going to worry about rationalizing the denominator right now. We can just work from there. Okay. Um, but if I don't have a horizontal asymptote, I either have a hole because something got divided out, which I know is not the case, or I'm going to have an oblique asymptote. So an oblique asymptote comes from the division of the denominator of the numerator and the denominator. So the oblique asymptote is y equals q of x, where q of x represents the quotient. So what we're going to do is do long division again. Because since this has a smaller power, it divides into that polynomial. So I'll have 2x squared minus 3 divides into x cubed. So 2x squared goes into, how many times does 2x cubed go into x cubed? Well, why don't we write it out over here? How many times does, what, if I simplified this, what would it look like? No, no, no. Guys, simplify this. Just, it's. 1 half x, right? So 2x squared divides into x cubed 1 half x times. 1 half x times 2x squared is just going to give me a x cubed. 1 half x times negative 3 is a negative 3 halves x. Now here's the interesting part. Does 2x squared, oh, so anyway, sorry, subtract our rows, and we get a positive 3 half x. Does 2x squared divide into 3 halves x? No, like we can't. That's, um, so therefore, this is going to be our remainder. Now, the cool thing about the finding the oblique asymptote is, unlike the previous problem where we're doing long division, we don't need the remainder. And I'll explain it to you once after, well, I'll explain it to you when we look at the graph. So all we're going to do is just take the quotient without the remainder. So the oblique asymptote is 1 half x. So you keep on doing it until you get to a remainder. Okay? And I'll explain, um, and I'll explain, that, in a, I'll explain that next. All right? Now, um, now let's still find the x and the y-intercepts. x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. That's x equals 0. And the y-intercept is the constant over the constant, which looks like I'm going to be 0 over 3, right? So y would equal to 0. Now, is anybody confused on why I don't use the remainder? Yeah. 